everybody. Brother Dan Goodwin here, your host today on this edition of Prophecy in the News. We're glad you're here with us. Um, you know, recently I, uh, I did a show a few weeks back called The Truth About the Sons of God in Genesis 6. Many of you uh, watched that right here. And boy, did we get some feedback on that. Yeah, we got a few uh, negative feedbacks. A few of you didn't, uh, didn't take the same view that I had, and that's fine. We're not, we're not mad at you if you don't agree with me on that. But we had a lot of folks who had questions about it, a lot of folks uh, who, who said that they, uh, they just didn't understand some of that no more. So uh, uh, as you recall, uh, a week or so ago, we had, or several weeks ago, we had Dr. Clarkson on. Remember, we did the Ask the Host program. And, uh, and guess what most of the questions were that came in from you, the listeners? Questions about the sons of God and, and Satan and the gap theory, all that stuff that I talked about in that, uh, that program a few weeks ago. So what we're going to offer you uh, is uh, we'd like to, we're going to offer you a DVD set. And Rex will put that up on the screen. We're going to put all three programs. We're going to put today's program on a DVD. We're going to put uh, the one I did on the truths of the sons of God, the truth about them that I did a few weeks back. And we're going to put the Ask the Host program, all three of those programs on one disc for you, plus this article that I hold in my hand that was uh, done by Dr. Charles Hiltabittle. Uh, fabulous article about the Genesis 6 syndrome, UFOs, aliens, the sons of God, angels or men, the Nef Nephilim or giants. A fabulous article that Brother Hiltabittle did. What I did, I went to his studio and we talked about this article. Uh, for about 25 minutes and we're going to show that to you we did that in his studio in illinois and we're going to go there and we're going to let you see that interview i think you're going to find it very interesting so we're going to take you there right now welcome everybody brother dan goodwin here i got dr charles hiltabittle with me here in his studio in illinois he's put up on the screens our process news logo for us but we're sitting in illinois at your studio yes sir and we appreciate you so much. Many of, your, uh, of our viewers will remember Dr. Hiltabittle. Uh, about a year ago, you yes, came sir. on and did your program with the, 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 the Christmas yes, CDs sir. that you uh -huh. had. Yes. Those things flew off the shelf. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Folks, if uh, it's Christmas is coming up again, if you'd like to uh, uh, get one of those, uh, just uh, Rex will put that up on the screen for you. Uh, but Doc, I, uh, I asked you if we could do a program together because... As you know, a couple months back, I did a program uh, called The Truth About the Sons of God. Right. That was a very controversial program. We got a lot of emails, a lot of uh, a lot of good interest as well. But there were some there were some people that were a little upset, and that's fine. You you always get some of that. Um, but I felt like I hit the nail right on the head. Sure. A couple, uh, oh, several weeks later, I did a, a program called Ask the Host. It was a special surprise program. We brought in Dr. Kevin Clarkson, the former host of Prophecy News. And, uh, and we talked on the program. Uh, we answered questions. Well, lo and behold, most of the questions people sent in have, had to do with that program that I yeah. did on the sons of God and the book of Enoch and all that stuff. And so Dr. Clarkson got to answer those, and he lined up pretty much where I stand. Sure. Well, then I, uh, I go to my mailbox, and I get this letter from you. This is your monthly newsletter. It's yes, called sir. the Issachar Report, and uh, I have it right here. And, uh, and, I, and I see in here that you did a whole article, a whole monthly uh, newsletter yes. on the subject of the, the Genesis 6 syndrome. So I called you up and I said, man, I loved it. I read every word of it. I loved it. And I said, we got to do a program. And uh, so Amen. I said, well, let's try me coming to you. Yes, sir. Uh, you live about two hours from me. And so I brought my camera and my equipment and here we are. Amen. And we're going to we're going to put this on Prussian News. And I'm sure you're watching it right now on, on television or on YouTube. Uh, here's the title of your of your uh, newsletter. Uh, of this month's newsletter, the Genesis 6 syndrome, UFOs and aliens, has the delusion already begun, <laughs> the sons of God, angel, angels or men, Nephilim or giants. Boy, I can't wait to hit that. The meaning of mixed seed. Now, my goodness, you're, you're trying to unload the whole boat here. Well. No, you did unho <laughs> unload the whole boat. <clears throat> so, in the program today, we're going to talk about this, this is a car report. And folks, for you listening, uh, Dr. Hiltabittle is giving us this newsletter. We've got 
dozens of them or a hundred of them, I think, that we that you printed off free of charge for us. And we're offering you today's DVD. We're going to put this on a DVD. Rex uh, is going to do that for us. This program will be on a DVD along with my program called The Truth About the Sons of God that aired a couple months back and the Ask the Host program with Dr. Clarkson. All three programs on one disc and Dr. Dr. Hiltabill is throwing in his newsletter. You need to read this newsletter. I promise you this will help, help you fill in some of the blanks on this subject. And uh, so let's talk about some of this, Doc. Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to start at the end of your newsletter, and then I'm going to come back to the beginning because okay. there's some stuff at the end that I think will introduce the program for us. You said at the end of the letter here, you said true biblical Christianity is continually being pushed to the corners of society and culture. What did you mean real quickly? Well, Christian and biblical impact on culture and society, uh, not only in America but around the world, for a very long time in America in particular, uh, Christianity had an impact on culture, and whatever the church and Christianity, it 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 we influence it influenced people. people. But today, it's pushed to the outer limits and is no longer even an impact on our society today. Kind of like that scripture in Matthew: if the salt has lost its yes, sir. flavor, the church has lost its yes. Christians have lost their yes. saltiness, their effectiveness. We don't uh, have the impact on society that once. Okay the church and Christianity as a whole ad. Now you got to state a whole paragraph here, and I'll just read a part of it. The obvious increase of the interest of our times, especially the last couple decades, and I'll go a little further, the last year, the yeah. last year or two, by the world as a whole concerning UFOs, aliens, other uh, esoteric subjects uh, is reaching a fever yeah. pitch. History channels, the, the nature channels, yes, uh, but let's be honest, prophecy channels, prophecy sure. ministries, yes. we're having UFO conferences yes, now. Yes, sir, I know. Uh, so elaborate on that a well, little bit. Well, uh, I mean, for a very long time now, uh, the, the evolutionary thought has permeated society, and the media has been the, they've carried the water for all of this, and so all of those channels have been nothing but about the aliens that seeded planet Earth, and there are other na aliens out there. Even the UN has got their own uh, section ready to welcome the aliens when they visit Earth. On the, all of this is just permeating the thought process uh, of our world today. Yeah. And uh, what's happened is what used to be just the secular world has now become a main theme of uh, even our prophecy conferences and and our prophecy ministries. Yep, you're right. You said here it would benefit all of Christianity if we, Christianity, yes. would refocus our attention on biblical prophecy rather than the sensationalism in the areas of unverifiable text. Yes. Want to elaborate on that? Well, I mean, they, they base their thoughts, many of them, on esoteric books or supposedly ancient writings. Uh, they're not canonized in Scripture for uh, various reasons and purposes, but it seems like outside of the Bible, uh, materials has become more important than what the Bible has now to let's say. Let's be specific. Your Book of book, Enoch book and, of Enoch. Uh, and other writings of that nature, and there may be some historical value. But what I say in my newsletter is we need to return back to biblical prophecy. Uh, things around Israel, the things that's happening in the world, all of these are pointing to the fact we're at the end of these last days. Yep. Now, the book of Enoch, three things about that. Number one, there are several different translations sure. of it. Sure. Of course, Absolutely. it was never in English, obviously. No. Uh, so there's several, several different translations. They're all different. Yes, so you've got to pick which one you think is the right one. Uh, secondly, uh, there's a lot of question on who wrote it because the book of Jude uh, talks about Enoch, but it does not say that he wrote a book. It says he's a righteous preacher, but there are a lot of other righteous preachers yeah. and they didn't have now, any he books may have, He may have wrote may the have. book of Enoch, but that doesn't mean that this was preserved properly. No. And, uh, and so we've got, like you say, we've got to put our faith in the old book. That's right. The King James Bible. And we need to let... We need to get back, I think, we need to get back to Bible prophecy, what the Bible has to say about these end times, not what something outside of the Bible has to say to it. You said here, um, um, so direct revelation, 
we got to uh, we we keep going outside of direct revelation, which is yes, the Bible, which is the book, um, and though that is which and which is revealed in the Word of God, and anything outside of that is speculation. That's exactly what it is. Okay? You said here, I know straightforward traditional Bible teaching is not as exciting or enticing right. to the nature of humanity as the more sensational subjects. Absolutely. That, that's just how humanity human operates, human nature. And, and we, want, we think we want something that's, uh, that's uh, sensational. As a teenager... Yeah. I could tell. I remember yeah. sitting around with the guys at night oh, yeah. talking about ghost stories and yeah. things just, that we couldn't explain. But that's human nature. But but the Bible is the, the it's it's the actual word of God. It's the revelation of God. Well, you need to get our ministries back to the purpose of promoting the word of God yes. and the end time, rather than just being in it for money. Now, well, all ministries need money. I understand. Oh, it that. it requires it. That's the world we live in. It requires, but but money is simply a medium for an accomplishment of a purpose. And, right. And our purpose ought to be ministry, not not business. Okay, Doc. Well, let's jump into this. And uh, like I say, I went a little backwards here, but we're gonna we're gonna come back now to the beginning of your newsletter here. And I'm gonna read a statement. I'm gonna let you comment on some. Of this this is right out of your newsletter again. Uh, and so we find ourselves giving answer to biblical controversies addressed in times past. Um, the matter at hand concerns the reoccurring debate over Genesis chapter 6 yes. as to who the Bible is referring to as the sons of God and the giants. Well, I've been involved in, in ministry now, uh, getting very near 60 years. and But uh, I've also been... Uh, the uh, on the board of directors of Creation Evidences Foundation in Glen Rose, Texas, uh, since its inception. So nearly 30-some years now I've been involved with that. And this debate has been dealt with. It goes in cycles, and it seems like ever so often it rises up again. But this time as it's come back up, it seems to have come up without uh, any civility among our brethren. Um, they they become mean and nasty rather than well that's your idea and, and I see it differently and but we're going to get along it's almost like I'm right you're wrong and I have no use for you anymore. So th th there's there's always been differences of opinions. Always but, been. But now it's it's gotten kind of hostile. It's become very hostile. And and people and, people will say you don't know how to rightly divide or you, you don't know your you don't know the Bible if you if you don't agree with me on this. And, well. That's the bottom line, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Um, we need to allow the Bible to be the interpreter yeah. rather than what Doctor yeah. So and So said. Yes, sir. Um, you said I'm not opposed to reading after good men, um, but the Bible's got to be the main. That's it. The main thing. It's the Bible's got to be where we yeah. get our belief the men, system. You know, men have their. No doubt, God gives them the ability to have insights and understandings and nobody can know everything outside of the Lord himself. Right. But when it comes to the bottom line of what's right, a Berean uh, checks it out by the Bible, not by somebody else's thought process. Right. Now you mentioned here about uh, preconceived thoughts. I'd like you to take just well, a couple seconds on that. Most of the time when people approach anything, our minds, our lives is saturated by what has been put into it to this point in our lives. So no matter what we come to in life, uh, we come with a preconceived idea right. about it. But when it comes to the things of the Bible, we need, we need to stop and check our preconceptions and allow the Bible right. to establish those boundaries for us. I teach that same thing. I, I say one of the biggest hindrances to understanding the book yes. of Revelation or, or other things is... Yes. is preconceived notions from the past. Things yes. we've been taught wrong, yes. and we've all been taught some things wrong. All of us, yes. Um, okay, rules of interpretation. I don't want to spend much time on that, but you you, you give several rules of how right. to interpret the Bible. Right. Um, you mentioned, first of all, context. Boy, that is yeah. so important. If you, don't, if you don't understand the context in which a verse is placed, uh, then you're going to make wrong application. And a lot of false doctrine is built by simply taking things out of its context. So let's use an example here and, and go back to something we probably should have hit already. Who are the sons of God? Let's, let's use the context to figure that out. Well, the context in Genesis chapter 6 
It's talking about men. It's talking about humanity. Uh, okay. Adam being the first man, uh, the name that is used there, and it's in the report, uh, Bain, which is the, the builder of the name. And uh, he's, the, he's the foundation of humanity. So the context, if the Lord had said in there, uh, men and angels and they, but he says man and he. It, it's pretty plain if okay. the text is about humanity. Now back to preconceived notions. If, if I had never been taught that, that angels had children with human women, mm -hmm. I, would, I don't think I would have ever read this and came to that conclusion no, if no. it hadn't been put in there by someone. Well, you see, they come to that conclusion because they have a misunderstanding of creation. Uh, they have an idea somehow or another that there's a gap of time in creation's account of chapter 1 between verse 1 and verse 2. Uh, but if they had an understanding, first of all, just simple context uh, brings it to you, an understanding that chap verse number 2 is simply an explanation of the condition of what was created right. On day number one, brought into existence. Just as Eve, uh, Eve was created, but then later on he goes into detail about it. Goes the into detail. That's the way a Hebrew writer writes. He gives you a summation and then sets out to tell you how you come to the conclusion. Yeah. And, uh, but here's what happens. If they believe there's a gap of time, that's when they try to uh, call it a Luciferian flood or, uh, a, uh, a, 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 the Luciferian age and, and all of that, and they try to bring the fall of the devil over into a gap of time. The question is simply this. Uh, if on the sixth day of creation God made man, he also on day number six instituted marriage. Right. So did man, was man here for billions of years? Uh, was creation in the process of billions and of he years? he was called the mother of all living. Before there was a marriage? Yeah. Hardly think so. Right. No. Genesis chapter 1 is an account of six literal days of the work of God in the first week of creation. Yeah. And in the beginning, it says, in yes. verse 1. That's time. Right, that's the beginning of our universe. That's the beginning of time this itself. This dimension. Yes, because there's three things that you have to have scientifically. Uh, you got to have five things for a science, scientist to be able to do uh, what he needs to do, but they're all laid out in verse number 1. That'd be for another time. But, but we have the beginning, which is time, and then we have, we have the heavens, which is space, and we have the earth, which is matter. And it's all laid out right there on day number one when God brings time in. Time is the confines of creation. And he did not create the heaven where he dwells. No. The Bible says in the, the seventh word, I did a program on my God's Find Jubilee YouTube. I, I did a program called the seventh word. <laughs> yes, the seventh true. word is heaven. Yes. And it's singular. Yes, and that's sir. what, and a lot of people are arguing with that. Right. They're telling me that, well, in the originals, what originals? There are no originals. There are no original Hebrew manuscripts anywhere no. on planet Earth. No. The Dead Sea Scrolls are not originals either. <laughs> and uh, they're, not, they're not even old enough to be originals. So, no, um, yeah, the context, it came to pass when men began to multiply. By the way, there's no mention of an angel no. all the way through chapter 6 of Genesis. It's no all angel. about humanity. Um, the angels uh, were not created in Genesis 1. No, angels are eternal beings. Right. They are outside the realm of time. So Satan was not created in the, in the six days of creation. No, he was present because yeah. he's from the outside of creation. And he's outside of time. Outside of time. Yeah. We're an eternal soul. Now, he shows up in chapter 3. We yes. see Satan. That's right. But, but, but there's no mention of any other angels yet. No. And yet we get to chapter 6 and everyone jumps to the conclusion that an angel can not only, uh, oh, that somehow he can procreate with humans. Well, Jesus is the one that said they neither marry nor are given in marriage. And, and uh, uh, angels are an eternal being outside the realm of time. A and man is an eternal soul living inside the realm of time, living in a temporal earthly body. That's why Paul refers to it as an earthly tabernacle. And that's Matthew twenty two thirty, I believe. Yeah. Rex, Rex can put that up. G you, know, you can read the story for yourself. Jesus yeah. admonished them that yes. angels neither marry nor give it in marriage. They don't, they don't marry. They don't procreate because they were created in eternity as an entity of body. We don't know how many. Are you saying there's no, there's no baby angels? 
<laughs> well, no, there is no baby angel. So here, here's what I get up. Uh, I get dumbfounded when people approach me with this stuff. I say, now, wait a minute. You're telling me an angel that, that's neither, that's, that, that there are no female angels. No. Now, there's really no masculine angels either, but they're masculine. They're we given in the as, masculine. Right. Yes. But there's no, they're sexless. I that's right. Say. So they're telling us that an angel that doesn't have organs, and that, that isn't, that is sexless, that yes. never procreates with female angels, because there are none. They're telling us that when they fell from heaven, all of a sudden now they can mate with a human person, a woman, well, and have but children. You, but you gotta, you gotta understand, there's 12 times in the first chapter of Genesis where it says, after his kind or after their kind. And everything inside the realm of time can only procreate within the bounds of its kind. And that is an important point that you bring out. Yes. Uh, men have babies with women. That's right. With humans. Humans. Uh, the dog family uh, has, That's right. has puppies. Everything is after its kind. Right. And if something could come from an eternal being into time, and procreate, it's an impossibility can, because there's no, it cannot be after its kind. Can Satan create? No. Okay. No, he can alter God's creation. He, I believe, can maybe advance processes. Yeah, he brought on disease to yes. Job. Well, you find in, in uh, when Moses is being used of the Lord to deliver Israel by uh, the devil and his crowd repeated the next day the thing. Where in the world would they get all the frogs the next day? Uh, that was brought out the day before if there was not right. an acceleration of tadpoles. Let's go just a little further. Now, you, Satan can't create. He's a counterfeiter. Well, he couldn't make the sand come into life. Right. So he, he cannot create. Now, no. let me ask you this. Does Because this comes up all the time because of Genesis 3.15. Oh. Does Satan have a seed? Well, the seed of Satan that he's talking about there is the fallen nature of humanity. That's right. That's why Jesus said even to the religious crowd, you're of your father the you're devil. You're of your father the devil. He didn't yeah. mean literally. No, because of their spiritual you condition. Wonder how I answer that question when I'm asked that? I said, Did, does, does woman have a seed? Because no. it talks about the seed of the woman. So you got to understand when you read the whole passage, there we go with context again. That's right. It's the context. seed of the man, the seed of Satan and the seed of the woman. Yes, sir. It doesn't have a seed. No. So talking about the offspring and all that. Talking about, of course, that is a dual. You know, that prophecy is a dual prophecy. Number one, it is speaking of the virgin birth, but number two, it's also uh, speaking of Israel that's going to produce the Messiah. Yeah. And that exactly. ties you over to the chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. Okay. Well, uh, there's some other rules of interpretation you give, but I'm going to skip those because we're running out of time. But, uh, um, part of the, uh, part of the, uh, confusion is this gap theory. Yeah. Now, let me say, and you already talked about this, but let me just bring this out and let you comment on this. Isn't it true that 90% of the people who believe in the gap theory, in other words, that there, were, there was creation yes. millions of years ago, mm -hmm. and something happened with fallen angels mm -hmm. millions of years ago was on the yeah. earth. Isn't it true that those same people, these things go hand in hand? The sons of God, the, the they fallen go to, angels? Yes, and sir. Okay. They're the same, the same crowd also believes that that there's a visitation in these days because they use the words of Jesus in the Matthew uh, in the Olivet Discourse, as the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And so they say, well, they was fallen angels and uh, they cohabited. And so in the end times, we're going to have the same thing coming back again. That's not what Jesus was talking no, about no. at all. He was talking about the attitude and That's the condition. Right. Exactly. He right. goes on to make that plain in they the text. Were, they were marrying and giving in marriage. There's nothing wrong with getting married, but what he was pointing out was they That's were right. not thinking about eternal things. They weren't. They did not see where, yes. what was going on around them. Yeah. And it says the imagination of their heart uh, was evil only continually. Yeah. He was talking about those conditions. He wasn't talking about a return of it. So yes, there is a tie between the gap theory believers and the return of the Nephilim idea that is out there. Now, we're not saying these are bad people, right? Oh, no, uh, no. We differ with them. They differ with us. Well, we don't agree on everything. Our, I learned a long time ago, if we agreed on everything, one of us wouldn't need to think. <laughs> All right. We don't have much time left, but uh, you talk about mixed seed in here. This is a big one. Yes. Mixed seed. They use this in Daniel. They yeah. use this to teach that angels somehow no. brought forth children with, with women. The text, again, is clear. 
You're looking at the political system. You're looking at the final days of the Gentile rule in that image. And the mixed seed there, you go over to the, uh, over to, uh, uh, when the children of Israel were being scolded by, uh, uh, oh, who returned from, uh, Ezra. Ezra said, look, they're mixed, they're mingling their seed together. Right. It's not talking about with something outside of humanity, right. but in Daniel, it's the mingling of the political and he structure. He talks about being diverse. Yes. Diversity. See, yeah. today we're being taught oh, in my. America that diversity is yes. good. Mm -hmm. Diversity is not good. When, when two people speak a different language, how do you build How do you something? communicate? Yeah. Yeah. And different cultures and different religions. That, that, that weakens the That's why Babel ceased where it right. did because of the confusion of and language. And God brought that yes, to, sir. to shut them down. God's for nationalism. All right, so the giants. Um, it's plain when I read Genesis 6, the giants were there before the union of the sons of God and the daughters of men. It had nothing to do with with any outside force. Even today, we have giant of people. Yeah. We might not have as some of the giants, but you got to understand, they were living in a different world, atmospheric condition than we live today. Yeah. The first world before the flood was by far nothing like what we have today. Let me ask you, did Goliath have a soul? Was Goliath a man? He was a man. Sure he was. Sure he was a man. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But he probably had a a tumor on his pituitary gland, which is indicative of folks that that are what we would call of giant size in our world even yet today. It's been known down through all of the ages, mm -hmm. but they're human. Yeah. Well, Doc, you said here, and we'll close with this, we've got about 45 seconds. Has the delusion already begun? Well, Talk I'm about the strong delusion. I'm confident. Well, part of the delusion is preparing the world to answer when we disappear. And they already have their mindset set up. We've been seated by the aliens. Aliens and the UFOs are going to come. I'm not looking for a UFO. I'm looking for the trumpet to take yes, me sir. out of here. All right. Well, Doc, thanks very much. Boy, Thank the time you, went fast. Amen. The time went fast. Uh, folks, we've been talking to Dr. Hiltabittle, and he's got a wonderful newsletter, the Issachar Report. We want, we're going to give you that when you order the DVD set. And you're going to enjoy this. This, going, this is going to open up some, some avenues of understanding for you. So until uh, next time, we'll send it back to the studio. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great interview with Brother Hiltabillo, my good friend. I hope that's a help to you. I hope you'll go uh, to the website or call the 800 number, order that DVD set and the article. It's going to help you. Until next time, keep looking up.